Hey, what's going on guys? Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Petters Extreme XA coilover setup available for your solid rear axle equipped 99 through 04 Mustang at home. Now you should be checking out this option from Petters if you're looking for a high quality set of coilovers to improve not only the stance, but more importantly, the handling of your new edge Mustang. Now the big feature when we're talking about a set of coilovers such as the XAs here from Petters will be that adjustment of your ride height. Now unlike a lowering spring that's just gonna deliver a set height, this is going to allow new edge owners out there to go from basically a stock ride height or right around there to absolutely slam to the ground and anywhere between thanks to the threaded bodies here on the shocks or dampers along with the adjustable collars, which really will determine where the car is ultimately going to sit. Now on top of the physical ride height, the Petters will also pack the adjustable dampers as well, which you can adjust up top here by turning this little knob. So basically you, you can control just how soft or how firm you'd like your ride quality to be. And that's not something you're gonna find with every set of coilovers here on the site, especially when we're talking about a budget friendly set. But what do you say we start with the dampers themselves and at the core you are going to find a mono tube design or damper with a single floating piston and a nitrogen charge. Now, sometimes in the aftermarket you might find a twin tube design, twin piston design. Those I would say are a bit more uncommon. A lot of your performance aftermarket suspension is going to utilize a mono tube damper just because they're a little bit more durable, a little bit more predictable, and uh, basically hold up better to high performance use without the risk of any shock fade. Now those dampers in this case are gonna be made from a lightweight and durable aluminum before being anodized black as you can see. That's just done to help keep things looking good for many years to come. I also just wanna come back real quick guys to that 30 way adjustability. Uh, as you can see, just turning this knob up top here will allow you to go full hard, full soft, anything in between, and that will allow you to customize your ride quality and your handling based on things like your driving type and also your ride preference. Both front and rear springs do feature a really tough alloy steel motorsports coil that has been developed using Petters deep background in motorsports. They've been around for a very long time. If you didn't know that, look them up a little bit, check out their pedigree. Uh, they've definitely done it and uh, done it well for a very long time. Now, spring rates in particular here, guys, you're looking at an 8K spring for the fronts, 5K spring for the rears. Now the fronts with the XA Extremes here do get topped off with the pre-installed caster camber plates from Petters. These guys are going to allow for further adjustment, including two degrees of both negative and positive camber. And that's always nice as well. Uh, if you go low, you're gonna need that extra adjustment for camber and that's built into these coilovers. Now these plates have been loaded with an upper spherical bearing in there. Uh, that's just gonna allow for smooth articulation without any binding or excess noise and should help contribute to an improved steering feel. Now finally guys, Petters does back their XA coilovers here with a pretty solid to your warranty just in case you should run into any issues. Price point for the Petters will be in that $1,300 to $1,400 range, which is gonna put this system in that mid to high tier, I would say. Uh, certainly a lot more affordable options out there when we're talking just bare bones, basic stuff that probably don't include things like the upper mounts here, the caster camber plates, along with that 30-way adjustability. Now, that being said, there are still way more expensive kits out there from companies like KW or RideTech. So I would say it's a nice step up from your entry-level basic kits, but without dropping you know, two to three grand like you would with some of those more top shelf options. Switching gears, let's get into the installation. And I will say one of the nice things about going with a coilover such as this is that you don't have to mess with spring compressors or anything like that if you're just using a lowering spring by itself. The reason being, as you can see, everything's already assembled for you. That's gonna make the job in the front a lot easier. The rears, you're still doing a basic spring and damper setup. So either way, guys, two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter is kind of what you can expect here. I would say leave yourself three hours, maybe a little bit more to get this one knocked out from start to finish, depending on how rusty your car is. Let's face it, these things aren't new anymore. But regardless, to give you a better idea of what you might encounter in the garage or driveway, feel free to check out our detailed walkthrough and tool breakdown now. For this install, you will need 
electric and air impacts, ratchets, 3 8 to half inch adapter if necessary, various extensions, various swivel adapters, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, and 24 millimeter sockets, 15 millimeter wrench, 15 millimeter ratcheting wrench, 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench, 18 and 21 millimeter wrenches, a bungee cord, a measuring tape, a pry bar, a five millimeter Allen wrench, a clip removal tool, the provided spanners, adjustable wrench, channel locks, also not shown here, but will be needed, is a jack and jack stands or pole jacks. What's up guys, today we're gonna be installing a coilover kit on our Mustang, but before we get started, we're gonna send you to watch a short video on how to uninstall your factory suspension, and we'll see you when you get back. All right, so moving on to the front, you can see that I have both my wheels and tires off. I've already disconnected the sway bar end link on the driver's side, so I'm gonna do the same on the passenger side here. It's a 15 millimeter nut. So let's get this nut off and this bushing as well. If that doesn't come off, it's fine. You can usually hit it up, hit the sway bar up and both those bushings will pop. All right, so now we're gonna remove our sway bar end links. Again, I have that 15 mil deep socket on my air ratchet. And then I have a 10 millimeter wrench on the shaft of the end link just to keep it from spinning. I'm just gonna start this nut. and pull that end link out of here. Remove that on both sides. All right, now we're going to remove our sway bar. You can see this is our mounting point with our bushing in there. These are 16 millimeter nuts. There are two on each side. And this plastic piece right here, we're actually gonna snake it through. So I'm going to buzz these off. Hoping that plastic is going to keep it up while I remove the other side. All right, now I'm going to snake this out of here. So there are some push pins that we can remove on the inside of here, let me get my tool real quick. This inner fender. So there's that push pin, it's a Christmas tree type clip. We are going to slide our sway bar out of the way. All right, so what we're gonna do now is remove our caliper and rotor. First starting with our caliper, we're gonna take the whole unit off. So we're after these two 15 millimeter bolts on the back side. Let's get a breaker bar on here first. Make sure that we can loosen them up. my air ratchet in here. And just to get ready, I have my caliper hanger right there. I'll keep that where my body bolt is. All right, and then we're gonna hang this caliper out of the way.
All right, so next up, we're gonna remove our rotor. If you haven't replaced your brakes or removed your rotor yet, you may still have these factory locking washers. R99 only has about 40,000 miles on it, so these are the original brakes. And we're going to remove these little metal washers, like the lock tabs that hold your rotor onto the hub itself. So you don't need to replace these or put them back on. I'll show you a trick when I reinstall the wheel, how to get your rotor to stay in place. But I just bend it so it's a misshape and then just spin it off. And now we can pull our rotor off. All right, so what we're gonna do next is remove our wheel speed sensor or our ABS sensor right here. And we need an E8 E-bit. So it's like an inverted Torx. And I have this on my quarter inch drive, so I'm just going to loosen this up and remove it. Because we gotta separate our spindle from our strut here in a second. And we don't wanna cause any unnecessary stress on this wheel speed sensor because they aren't cheap. All right, so that's out. All right, so let's remove that wheel speed sensor. I'm just gonna push it in the front and pull it in the back as well at the same time. This has not been removed since new. There's a lot of road grime on that. All right, so that's out. Then I'm gonna take my push pin removal tool and get this loom out of the way. And then lift up on these. Just get that out of the way. Again, this is a magnet, so you can just stick it to a body part and it'll be out of the way. All right, so our next step is to remove this one 24 millimeter nut holding this little brake line bracket in place. So just spin this off. We are going to attach that again later. And then we're going to lower the vehicle down to the ground so we can get a jack onto the lower control arm. And then we're going to remove the two nut and bolts holding our strut assembly to our spindle. And what that will do is release the tension on that pocket spring. So we can lower the jack, get that spring out, and get our strut up all at the same time. All right, so as you can see, I have a jack directly under my lower control arm. The vehicle is pretty low to the ground. And what I'm going to do is now jack up on my jack and take up some of that tension on my pocket spring. Now I can remove the nut and bolt on my lower strut assembly. I'm gonna need a 21 millimeter socket for my bolt head on this side, and then a 24 millimeter socket for my nut side. Let's go ahead and get our tools in place here. All right, there's the first nut. And let's get the second one out of here. Second nut, I'm gonna try to pull one of these bolts out. All right, there's one, there's two. Then I'm going to let my spindle just hang out here. And you see my strut is free now. Now I can lower my jack slowly and have this pocket spring come out. But first I'm going to remove my strut so I have some more room to play with. All right, now we're going to remove our strut. We'll start off by removing these nuts. These are 15 millimeter. Now I'm going to hold onto my strut Take out this last bolt. Make sure you grab that and remove your strut. All right, so now I'm going to release the tension on my jack and watch what happens to my pocket spring. It's gonna wanna fall out of there. So I may need a pry bar to help get it out. That's what we're gonna do now. All right, so there may still be a little bit of tension on this spring, so just be very careful and weary of that. And there it goes. 
Alrighty guys, welcome back. Now that we've got our front suspension uninstalled, we can go ahead and install our new coilover setup. So what we're gonna do is feed this under the wheel well into our factory mounting location and go ahead and use our supplied flange nuts and get the top of our new coilover buttoned down. So now we'll go ahead and feed our new coilover in. And we'll get our studs lined up with the top mount here. And we'll go ahead and get our supplied 14 millimeter flange nuts on our studs. And we're just gonna leave these hand tight for now so we get everything else on. So before we get our knuckle back installed into our new coilover setup here, it's a good time to explain how to adjust the height on this particular setup. Now you have many adjustments here, uh, but as far as height goes, if you want to raise the vehicle up to say a more stock ride height, you will need to crack this lock nut loose and it is going to go up. If you turn it right, it'll go up. That's what you want to release it from your perch mount here. And then if you were to spin this down, that's going to raise your vehicle. And if you were to spin this up, that's going to lower your vehicle. So depending on the height you want, that is how you adjust your base ride height for this setup. So now we'll go ahead and grab our provided spanner and we're going to pop this lock nut loose. These are pretty tight when they come out of the box. And we'll go ahead and get ourselves clearance. We are lowering the vehicle, so. so we're going to grab the measuring tape and we're going to go about two inches up, just to give ourselves about a two inch drop. It's going to be about an inch and three quarters. We're going to stay safe there to give ourselves at least a few threads so this lock nut doesn't jam into our spring lock nut. We're gonna hold that right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and spin our perch up. So now that this is snug, we're actually gonna come back just a little bit. That's gonna allow us to adjust this to mount it to our knuckle before we go ahead and tighten that back down. So now we're gonna go ahead and use our floor jack to bring our lower control arm and knuckle up to meet our coilover. Now you do wanna make sure your brakes, everything isn't gonna interfere and get pinched or anything. And there is a certain point of lowering that we can't go to because that bottom ball joint is going to hit. But we'll see where we stand with it as it sits. So we've got it lower back down enough to where it's not going to interfere with our ball joint and it is out far enough where we don't have to worry about it hitting. It's really only about a quarter inch or so, just to give yourself enough, enough clearance. So we've got our floor jack pumped up to where we can line our knuckle up with our perch. Go ahead and slide that in. We're going to reuse our factory mounting bolts here. Go ahead and get those through our perch. The bottom one may be a little bit tricky here. Let's go ahead and get that in. So now that we have both of our factory bolts back in place, we can go ahead and reinstall our 24 millimeter nuts.
and we'll go ahead and tighten these down. So now we'll go ahead and tighten these back down using our 24 mil socket and extension on our impact and a 21 millimeter wrench for the head of the bolt. Then we'll go ahead and reinstall our factory mounting bolt. Then we'll go ahead and tighten that back down using our E8 inverted Torx, our extension, and our ratchet. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our bracket here. Line up with our bolts. Reinstall our 24 millimeter nut. We're just going to snug that back down, again using our 24 mil socket on our impact. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our brakes. So we'll get our rotor back into place here. Put that on. We'll grab our caliper bracket. Go ahead and get that back into place. Reinstall our 15 millimeter bolts. So we'll get our first bolt started here. And we can get our second bolt in. Now we'll go ahead and tighten down our bracket bolts using our 15 mil socket. Now we'll go ahead and get our pads reinstalled. Front pad here. Now that we have those in, we'll go ahead and get our caliper mounted back up. We'll go ahead and put this in place. We can go ahead and reinstall our 12 millimeter caliper bolts. We'll go ahead and tighten them back down with our 12 mil socket. So now that we have everything bolted down, we can come in here and get our lock nut for our perch, tighten back down. So we'll run that down until it hits our perch. And then we'll use our provided spanner again. Go ahead and tighten this back down. Now sometimes once you get these tight, it's a good idea to take like a soft mallet and give this a few taps just for that extra tightening. For demonstration purposes, we're not gonna do that, but it's not a bad idea when doing this at home. So now we'll go ahead and tighten down our top mounting nuts here using our 14 mil socket on our electric impact. Note, you do not want to use air impacts to tighten these down. So we'll go ahead and snug these up.
Then remember when fully tightening these down, you always want to refer to the manufacturer torque spec for all of your hardware. So now once you have everything done on this side, you can go ahead and repeat these same steps for the other side, and then we can go ahead and reinstall our sway bar. So now we can go ahead and get our sway bar back into place. We'll fish it over our lines here. And before you put it back on your studs, you want to get it over your tie rod ends. Line back up in your center points there. That's not going to work. So now that we've got the sway bar on our mounting studs and our end links are through our holes here. We can go ahead and reinstall our 16 millimeter mounting nuts. Try not to drop them. And get that one in place. That one. Now we can go ahead and do the same thing on the other side, then we'll get our bottom bushings and mounting nuts for our end links on and tighten everything up. Now we can go ahead and get our bottom end link bushing back on. Now this may be at a bit of an angle here. Might be a little bit tough to get this back in. Go ahead and give ourselves some room here. So to give us a little bit more room to get our lower end link bushing on, we're gonna go ahead and tighten up our mounting bracket nuts first. So we'll grab our 16 mil socket and extension on our impact and tighten these down. So we've got our bottom bushing onto our sway bar end lake. Now, depending on how low you're gonna put your vehicle, your factory sway bar does work. It just may be a little bit cumbersome all the way at the lowest point of this kit. So we've got a pry bar and we're just persuading our sway bar and end link a little bit out so we can get our bottom mounting nut started here. Now we can go ahead and tighten that down. So now we'll take our 15 mil socket on our impact and tighten this down. And as you can see, that was a little tight there, but once you get it in place, it should be just fine. So now you can go ahead and repeat this process on the other side once you've got this side bolted down. So now once we've got everything else installed in the front, we can go ahead and reinstall our little plastic shrouds here. Get this back into place here. Then just reinstall our little plastic push pins. We've got our middle one holding it in. Go ahead and get our back one in place. Now these are a little bit of a pain to get back in. Right, so push that in. So now we'll go ahead and get our little front clip back in. Ours is broken, but it's kind of hanging on there. So just go ahead and pop your push pin back in. And once we have it done for this side, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side. All right guys, so now that we have everything done in the front, we're gonna send you to watch a short video on how to uninstall your rear suspension, and we'll see you when you get back. All right, so we're gonna start off in the back and we need access to our trunk. And we're gonna remove a few trim pieces in here, the sides to get access to the top of our shock. But right here on this trim piece, there are four push pins. And I have a push pin removal tool. If you don't have one, you can use a flathead screwdriver. So let's remove all four of these. Again, they're push pins like a Christmas tree type. There's two on each side of that hinge plate. Just lift that piece out of the way. And then on the back side of your trunk, you're gonna see two plastic screws. You can use a flathead. There is a little slot right there for it. We're just gonna spin it off with our finger. And these are just like a plastic nut type deal. So 
just like that. All right, now with those two nuts and four push pins removed, we are going to get this panel out of the way, set it off to the side. So we're also going to remove the two side panels that cover our shock towers in the rear. These will just slide out of the way, just off to the side there. And that will expose the nut for the top of our shock. Do that on both sides. All right, so I have my air ratchet right here. It's a 3 8 drive with a deep 15 millimeter socket. We are going to loosen up and remove the nuts on top of our shock. So do that on both sides. And now when we lift the vehicle in the air, those shocks will drop out. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get our wheels and tires off. All right, so one of our first steps in the uninstall process is to get this quad shock out of the way. So if you have a GT or a convertible version, you will have this quad shock here. I have an 18 millimeter socket. I'm just gonna remove that nut and take the quad shock off of that stud. Just pull it like that and let it sit. Do that on both sides. All right, so since we had to remove the nut on the top of our shock, what we're after now is the bolt here. It's a 15 millimeter head and an 18 millimeter nut on the back side. So I'm just gonna pull the bolt and then get the shock out of the way. Do that on both sides as well. All right, so now we're going to remove our rear sway bar. First, we're gonna get this wheel speed sensor out of the way and off of this bracket here. And then we're going to use a 14 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts on this side and the two bolts on the other. And then the sway bar will just slide out of the way. So as you see on this bolt right here, you're gonna have a parking brake bracket. You're just gonna slide that out of the way. We'll reattach that when we put our new sway bar in. All right, now I'm gonna get the last two bolts out and slide this sway bar out of the way. All right, so you can see that I have two pole jacks supporting the entire weight of my rear end. I'm going to get the last bolt that holds in my sway bar out of the way. And you can see these handles are facing straight back. So hopefully this sway bar will land on there. There is a little bit of weight, so if you have a friend to help you out, I highly recommend you grab them. But I'm gonna give one hand to the bar and one hand to my impact and get this bolt out of here. There's that side. And I'm gonna pull this bolt. And there is our factory sway bar out of the way. So minus your upper and lower control arms, those are the only things that are attaching your rear axle to the body of the Mustang. So now I'm going to lower my jack stands evenly, both at the same time. And then I'm going to lower one side a little lower than the other so I can angle it and get that spring out of there. So as you can see, there's, not, there's no tension on that, but there is on this. And if I pull on this side of the axle, I can get that spring out. So I'm gonna lower down even more to get some more travel out of it. Just like that. And now I can get my spring out of there. All right guys, welcome back. Now that we've shown you how to uninstall your factory rear suspension, we can go in with our new setup. So we're gonna grab our perch, which is our adjuster part for our spring. And we have our bushing here at the bottom. Our spring's gonna sit on that. And we are gonna reuse our factory top bushing for our new spring. That simply just pops right off and you can push it right onto the new one like so. Very simple. We can go ahead and get our spring into our factory perch location. As you can see, this is much shorter, so we're gonna need to raise our differential up to kind of capture our spring. So we can go ahead and do that now. So 
So now we have our differential raised up enough to keep our spring and our perch in line with the factory mounting points. Then we can go ahead and reattach our quad shocks and our sway bar, and then we can go ahead and get our shock mounted. So to get our quad shock back in place, we're gonna to need to compress it a bit because our differential is obviously closer to the vehicle. So we'll go ahead and give that a push and get it lined back up with our stud here. Sometimes this sleeve will pop out and that's okay. Pushes right back in. And we'll go ahead and get our 18 millimeter nut back on here. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. So we grab our 18 mil socket on our impact. Tighten this in. Then once we have that done, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So now we can go ahead and get our sway bar back into place on our control arms. So we'll grab our factory bolts, go ahead and start getting this back into place. Now this is kind of tricky because it's a long, heavy bar, but we'll go ahead and get our first bolts in place here. Now that we have this one started, we'll do the same thing on the other side, and then we can just swing it up and get our rear bolts in place. So now we'll go ahead and get our ABS line bracket back in its spot. And we can just swing our sway bar back up. Everything lined up. And we'll go ahead and get the other bolt on the other side started and then we'll tighten these down. So now we'll go ahead and tighten these back down with our 13 mil socket on our impact. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now we'll go ahead and stick our ABS line grommet back into its bracket. Let's work that back into place here. And go ahead and do that for the other side. So now we can go ahead and begin to get our shock in place. So we're gonna go ahead and slip our top mounting shaft up into its location here. We have our bottom bushing and our sleeve here on the bottom washer. And we'll go ahead this up into its location, like so. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and get our bottom mounting point in place. Slide that through. We're gonna reuse our factory mounting bolt. Go ahead and get that in. Go ahead and reinstall our factory nut. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down. So now we'll go ahead and grab our 15 mil socket and swivel adapter on our impact and our 18 mil wrench. Go ahead and tighten this down. Then we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side and we'll get our top mounts in place. So now we've got our vehicle lowered down and we do have the floor jack underneath our differential to keep it pushed up enough to get our top mounting point in place for our new setup here. So we're gonna grab our top bushing and washer. Go ahead and set those on our mount here. Then we're gonna use our provided lock nut. Go ahead and get that started. Once we have that started, we'll go ahead and tighten that down. So we'll use our 17 millimeter ratchet wrench to go ahead and start tightening this down.
And if you find you get to a point here where the locking part of the nut causes the shaft to spin, we'll go ahead and grab our Allen wrench and get that in the head of our stud there and hold that from spinning. So since our lock nut is grabbing onto the shaft and causing it to spin, we'll go ahead and grab our five millimeter Allen wrench, stick that in the head of our stud here. And that'll prevent it from spinning. Now that we have that fully tightened down, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now we can go ahead and put our side fabric covers back in. So you kind of want to tuck those down, slide them back into place like so. It'll take a little bit of persuasion sometimes to get them where they need to go. Get your little mounting studs back into place. And you should have two hand screws located up here. Ours are lost to time, unfortunately, with this one. Get our rear cover back in place, same deal. You should have little screw pins over here. And then if you did remove your hinge panel here, you go ahead and get the other side in the same way and then reattach your hinge panel with the push pins. Alrighty guys, so once you have this all set up and installed, you definitely want to take this over to your local alignment shop and have a professional alignment done just to set your base measurements up so then you can tweak your setup from there. But you definitely want to get this in the shop, get it on the rack, and have it aligned first thing after you install this. Alrighty guys, that about wraps up our review and install of our Petters Extreme XA Coilover Plus Kit for your 94-04 Mustang, excluding the 99-04 Cobra. Thanks for watching, and as always, for everything Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.